On October the 29th, 1929, the US stock market crashed, a day forever engraved as Black Tuesday. The value of stocks crashed dramatically, with investors losing around $14 billion in a single day, a sum equivalent to about $248 billion today. Over the course of the following week, the losses rose to nearly $30 billion. The fallout was swift and devastating. As the backbone of the American economy crumbled, the immediate impacts were felt far and wide. Unemployment soared from a modest 3.2% in 1929 to a staggering 24.9% by 1933, leaving one in four employable Americans without work. The banking system collapsed under the weight of unrecoverable loans and widespread panic. In a span of three years, over 9,000 banks either went bankrupt or closed their doors to prevent bankruptcy. Average American families bore the burden of this economic catastrophe. Life savings were wiped out overnight and countless households were thrust into poverty. Many were unable to pay mortgages or buy necessities, while breadlines and soup kitchens became grim symbols of the time. Black Tuesday marked not just the start of the Great Depression, but a period of unprecedented hardship and struggle for the American people. Between 1930 and 1934, Roughly 1 million families lost their homes to foreclosure. This period, characterized by a disturbing lack of financial stability, resulted in a poverty-stricken existence for countless Americans. The role of insurance companies during this time further complicated the financial turmoil. As the economy floundered, insurance companies found themselves unable to cover the vast number of defaulted mortgages. Amidst the economic hardship and financial insecurity of the Great Depression, the very fabric of American food culture saw a transformative shift. One notable development was the increased activity of the National War Garden Commission, originally established during World War I to encourage Americans to grow their own food. During the 1930s, this organization not only boosted domestic food production, but also supported more food exports to European countries, aiding allies struggling with the aftermath of the First World War. The financial strain also radically altered the American diet. With incomes drastically reduced, families were forced to adjust to budget-friendly meals. Staples such as mac and cheese, baked beans, potato soup, and basic cornbread became popular. These dishes were not just economical, but could also feed many mouths, becoming common fixtures on the dining tables of American families. However, this shift in diet had detrimental effects, particularly on children. As families rationed and simplified their meals, child nutrition suffered. There was a marked rise in malnutrition and related diseases, such as rickets. This vitamin D deficiency disease, characterized by weak or soft bones, was primarily a consequence of limited access to milk and dairy products. As the harsh reality of the economic crisis set in, leisure activities experienced a considerable shift. The glitz and glamour of cinemas, once a popular escape, were rapidly becoming a luxury many could not afford. Statistics reveal that cinema attendance dropped by almost 40% from 90 million per week in 1929 to about 60 million per week by 1933. In the face of financial adversity, however, new forms of entertainment began to gain around. Rather than lavish spending on movie tickets, Americans leaned into simpler, more cost-effective forms of social interaction. Church-organized potlucks gained popularity, serving not only as a source of communal support, but also as a way to ensure everyone got a hearty meal. Board games, mini-golf, and listening to the radio at home became favored pastimes, offering respite from the daily grind of economic hardship. These communal activities served as more than just entertainment. They were lifelines that helped maintain a semblance of normalcy amidst an era of despair. The sense of togetherness fostered by these activities reinforced community bonds, providing a much-needed morale boost during a time when hope seemed to be in short supply. As communities and families adapted to the trying times of the Great Depression, a notable shift occurred in the realm of labor. When the economic downturn left many men jobless, women stepped into the breach, the role transforming from homemakers to breadwinners. Between 1930 and 1940, the number of employed women in the US actually rose from 10.5 million to 13 million. However, this increase did not come without controversy. Despite their crucial role in keeping families afloat, working women faced significant backlash. 
In an era when societal norms placed women primarily in the domestic sphere, their heightened presence in the labor market was met with criticism. Many viewed working women as taking jobs away from men, despite the reality that most women were employed in traditionally female-dominated industries, such as nursing, teaching, or domestic service. The impacts of the Great Depression rippled into the educational sector and childhood experience as well. Faced with financial constraints, many school districts had no choice but to shorten school days or even shut down entirely. By 1933, more than 2,600 schools across the United States had closed their doors. This had a dramatic impact on children's education, with many deprived of formal learning opportunities and compelled to join the workforce at a young age. Indeed, the grim realities of the Depression led to a significant increase in child labor. Struggling families needed all hands on deck to make ends meet. Consequently, children as young as 9 or 10 found themselves working in fields, factories, or on the street selling newspapers. Thus, the repercussions of this period extended far beyond just the financial. With the widespread impact of the Great Depression reaching far into the lives of individuals and families, government caseworkers emerged as crucial players in managing the crisis. Their role involved not just administrative tasks, but also included providing direct support and aid to those in need. A powerful symbol of poverty and struggle known as the breadline emerged amidst this chaos. The phrase, to live on the breadline, came to signify an existence on the barest minimum, a life hanging on the edge of survival. Families queued for hours in these breadlines, hoping for a meal often comprising of nothing more than a simple loaf of bread and perhaps a bowl of soup. These breadlines, organized by charities and government agencies, became grim markers of the economic downturn, stark representations of the everyday struggle for many Americans. Meanwhile, the economic hardship also led to an increase in the number of hobos, unemployed men who left their homes in search of work or simply to relieve their families of the burden of one more mouth to feed. These extended hardships unsurprisingly led to a surge in criminal activities, as individuals resorted to illegal means to survive. An infamous illustration of this was the bank robbing spree of Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow. Bonnie and Clyde, as they are commonly known, embarked on a two-year crime wave between 1932 and 1934, robbing small banks and gas stations across the Midwest, becoming emblematic of the lawlessness of the period. One of the most notorious crimes of the era was the kidnapping and murder of Charles Lindbergh's young son in 1932. This crime shocked the nation, as it targeted one of the most famous figures in America at the time. The overall crime rate significantly increased during the Depression. Between 1933 and 1938, the homicide rate in the US rose by almost 20%, while the robbery rates increased by over 50%. In response to the economic and social disorder, President Franklin D. Roosevelt implemented a series of policies known as the New Deal, with the Agricultural Adjustment Act, or AAA, as one of its cornerstones. Enacted in 1933, the AAA aimed to revive the agricultural sector, which had been hit hard by both the economic downturn and severe droughts. The AAA sought to raise crop prices by providing subsidies to farmers to reduce their production, thereby creating an artificial scarcity that would drive up the market prices of agricultural commodities. This measure resulted in a significant rise in farm incomes, from a low of $2.3 billion in 1932 to $6.9 billion by 1935. Though the AAA was controversial and faced legal challenges, its effects were undeniably transformative. For many struggling farmers, the act provided much needed relief and stability. If you enjoyed this video, please support us by hitting the like button. Stay updated with our latest videos by subscribing to our channel.